some shooting from him. They need strong rebounding and board work, easy scores, and they need this. They need his passing, his emotion, his leadership. This is what he's played all season for, and these two guys were brought in to help him. Latrell Sprewell has been terrific in the last two games. You see his number. Sam Cassell, 40 points in game one. He's struggling with a bad back. They need these three guys to the carry him tonight with a crowd, this emotion, keep their turnovers down, and get to the free throw line, Kevin. All right, well, the Sacramento Kings tonight are fighting a couple things. First of all, the suspension of Anthony Peeler, which already adds to a short Sacramento bench, and also, Doug, the ghosts of some heartbreak in the past, deciding game losses, uh, game seven losses. What is their state of mind? How do you view the Kings? Well, they go as Mike Bibby leads them. Kevin Garnett says, if we can still fight me the down, we can win the game. And they got to try to keep him in a lot of the lane. You see the big men packing the lane. That frees up shots for the big men for Sacramento. They must step out on the floor, Chris Webber, and knock down his open jump shots. Mike Bibby's dribble penetration, his ability to get in the lane and make critical plays. And then at crunch time, he's the guy that makes the big baskets. You can see what he has done in their wins, and then they need their two other best players. Paige Stoyakovich, who struggled with his shooting, coming off his best game in the series of Game 6. And Chris Webber, this is his time to show what he can do in this Game 7 to make up for some of the heartbreak that this team has felt. They need to get off to a good start, though, tonight, Kevin. So the season either ends or extends tonight. And as the St. Paul Pioneer Press said so aptly, it's win or go home for the Kings and for the Timberwolves. It's Game 7, and it comes your way next on TNT. Midwest gives way to dust. We welcome you back to the beautiful city of Minneapolis with Doug Collins and Cheryl Miller. This is Kevin Harlan. A look now at our McDonald's starting lineups with the Sacramento Kings. Doug Christie and Mike Bibby in the backcourt. Paige Istiakovic, Vladi Divac, and Chris Weber on the front line for Sacramento and for the Minnesota Timberwolves, led by their, anchored by their MVP, Kevin Garnett. It was flanked by Sprewell and Johnson on the front line, Sam Cassell and Trenton Hassel in the backcourt. Let's begin with Sam Cassell because there is so much about him and his role tonight. He's got a bad hip. He's got a bad back. He's playing with a ruptured eardrum. He'll be important for Kevin Garnett. Well, you see the ritual of Kevin Garnett, the rosin in honor of Michael Jordan. What he used to do to Johnny Red Kerr in Chicago before the games and you know go over and tap his heart for all of his friends today's his 28th birthday what a wonderful gift it would be for him and again the look at Sam Cassell three of 16 the last five games from the three-point line he's struggling getting lift on his shot and I guarantee you Sacramento is going to test him defensively here early to see how well he's moving. Game seven records all time for the Kings franchise and the first ever seventh game. The Timberwolves played a fifth and deciding game back in 98 in the first round against the Seattle Supersonics. Our officials tonight, Dick Pavetta, Bennett Salvatore, and Tom Washington, a veteran crew. And it's Cassell in Minnesota with a first. Garnett faced with Weber. And Sprewell. Nick Trenton Hassel coming off an 0 of 6 game in Sacramento on Sunday. A Weber rebound. Doug Christie. And you see the matchups. Sam Cassell will play Doug Christie. They're going to take Mike Bibby, let him move without the basketball a little bit. They did this in game six to get him some shots off screens to start the game. And Mike Bibby with the first Sacramento shot, Garnett with the rebound. Kevin Garnett has to clean the backboard tonight. Four of his top five rebounding games of all time have come against the Sacramento Kings. 25 in one game this year. Shot clock is at eight for Garnett. And I can tell you, for Kevin Garnett, that feels good. Remember in game one here, he was so amped up when he won the MVP shot. Six of 21 with six turnovers. Sacramento won in here tonight. He knows he has to perform. And Bibby's got to perform for Sacramento, but he turns it over right there. Here comes Garnett. Kings back on defense. Sam Fisher. Kevin in big games. Turnovers 
missed free throws, mistakes. Those are the things that beat you. The team that does the better jobs in those areas tonight will win. Urban Johnson is on Vladi Divac. And the 36-year-old center for the Kings puts Sacramento on the board. With this short bench, Doug, they've got a lot of things on their mind the Kings do tonight, how they're going to manage the time of these players. Well, Rick Adelman's going to have to use his substitutions in a way to get guys rest where he can keep them on the floor the maximum minutes and still get rest for them so they can be fresh to finish this game. Sprewell tried to put it into coverage, and here comes Bibby. First Minnesota turnover. Doug Christie. And look at Divac, Abdul Garnett, and here is Bibby open for three. And so Mike Bibby has started the game 0-2. Cassell leaning into Stojakovic in a Bibby rebound. Sam leaned in to create the contact. That's why there's no whistle on that play. Sacramento has started one of four from the field. And Divac over Irvin Johnson. Those are the shots I talked about in the open. The big men are going to have open jump shots. Vladi, Brad Miller, Chris Weber, they need to shoot a high percentage for Sacramento to win. Here comes Cassell, who's hit only one three-point shot since game one. Garnett. Sprewell for three. plays on the road in a big game. Keep it simple. Make the simple pass. Those kind of plays give you extra possessions. If you're Minnesota at home, that's what you're looking for. There's the turnover story as the Timberwolves have started the game. Two of six from the floor. And Cassell. Divac came out with a flash of defense and the shot clock is at three. Weber with the rebound. And you can see Sam there, not very mobile, very stiff with that move. And if he's going to over dribble and play like that, he's going to get his team in trouble. He's going to have to move that basketball. Weber with a nice pass in the D box. And here comes Cassell. Sprewell, who has averaged over 30 points the last two games. D box the rebound. The Kings are plus one in that category. who will play some point tonight when Bibby rests. And here comes Bibby in the right of white jerseys, another turnover. You really see Sam Cassell really laboring right now to get up and down the floor. It's going to be interesting to see how long he can go. But he didn't even get across half court on that play. And I think that Rick Adam is going to say, we need to talk about this. We're careless, we're sloppy, we've got a chance to have the lead, and we're turning the ball over. If so, we're going to end up beating ourselves. Timberwolves have been up by as many as four. Timeout. Thousand four NBA playoffs on TNT are being brought to you tonight by Sky Sport, the new low carb ultra premium malt beverage with the taste of citrus and cranberry. By Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. By Lamis Hill AT, the official athlete's foot treatment of the NBA. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Cheryl Miller is with us as well tonight and arguably the greatest female player of all time. But Cheryl, you've had big games like this where you've got to control your emotions, Absolutely. control your passion. Take us inside the head of Kevin Garnett right now. What is he going through? You know, Kevin, it's very sim very interesting that you bring up that I had the same passion as Kevin Garnett. But the challenge tonight is can he harness and channel all that energy and emotion better than game one? Also, you have to add in mind, today marks the anniversary of the death of his best friend, Malik Seeley. And Kevin and Doug, if he can, harness all this energy and a win tonight would only solidify why he is one of the top three players in the world. This is where MVPs are defined, Doug, and, in the playoffs. And absolutely. And you know what? He doesn't have to do it by scoring 30-plus points. You know, 20-plus points, you know, 20 rebounds, the assists, the block shots, all the intangibles he brings. When he tries to score too much, sometimes
sometimes he turns the ball over and, and shoots a lower percentage. So he's a guy that can dominate the game in so many different ways, and his teammates feed off of everything that he does, Kevin. Irvin Johnson just picked up a quick foul for the Timberwolves. Here's Devots again, and Paige Stojakovic, who has been cold in these playoffs, continues that way. Free well with the rebound. Well, Trenton Hessel's done a great job getting a hand in his face. That's the reason he's shooting so poorly. Every shot is contested. A lot of nervous energy in this game. And that's what you would expect. That's why they're not shooting well, and there's a lot of turnovers. They'll settle down. It's Johnson from point blank range. <laughs> Twice he has a shot at it. Minnesota has missed their last seven shots of the game. Now watch the last part of this play. He gets a hand. He, he gets beat on the ball. Watch him get up a hand in the face. Your percentage goes down about 20% when you get a hand on a contested shot. That's that's how important it is to get a hand up on a very good shooter. He's shooting 37% as Stojakovic in this series against Minnesota. The ball rotation to Hassel and across the lane and out to Kevin Garnett. Garnett looks sharp. He has started two of three. But I like what Hassel did there. He didn't settle for the long range shot. He dribble penetrated. I think Minnesota's taken too many threes in this series. They're not a big three point shooting team. Ten during the regular season over 17. They've got to get to the line more. And they're going up against the number one three point shooting team in the regular season. Some dancing by Weber counted for two. His first two of the game. KG picks up the foul. And that breaks somewhat of a drought for the Sacramento Kings from the field. Well, good footwork here by Chris Weber, and he has to use shot uh, fakes. Kevin Garnett is a shot blocker. Chris Weber does not have great lift now. And if you take a look at his legs, Kevin, he has a little bit of a sleeve he's wearing on his left leg, and on his right leg, he got a bruised calf in game five, and he's wearing something on his right calf, so his legs are not right at this moment. Terrific shot by Sam Cassell. He loves to take smaller players down into the post. Early offense, loves to get down there, shoot this little fading jump shot. Looked much better on that shot. Looked like he had more lift than we've seen here early in the game. And maybe as the game goes on, he will settle in and his back will loosen up. But he's a lot of nerves right now. Sam Cassell has two championship wins with Houston. Latrell Sprewell played in the NBA Finals with New York. They have big game experience to help in moments like this. Well, Doug, I got to believe with the bad back that affects his shot. His legs is trying to get some elevation. Ah. Christie taking it inside. Now, see, this is what Sam's got to stay away from. He's been very emotional the last few games. He fouled out of two of the last three. He had five fouls in the other game. He had a couple technical fouls. He's got to stay away from this tonight. They need him to play with passion, but to play smart. It's Stojakovic. Back out to Divac. They got a first 24-second shot clock. Weber, nice screen for Mike Bibby. Rebound by Sam Cassell. Sacramento is 2 of 10 shooting tonight. Garnett. Now Kevin shooting the ball with great rhythm. He hit his first shot on the floor. He stepped out, hit two open jump shots. Really in a nice rhythm. And Devox fumbling it away. Out of bounds he goes. That's four Sacramento turnovers in this game. See, this is why you play all season long to get the home court. Moments like this, Sacramento in game six was flawless with their passing. They moved the ball. They hit the open man. They shot 50% from the floor, 56% from three. You can already see here, being on the road here, how they are disjointed here early in this game. So Brad Miller comes in for the first time, and Devox will sit. Remember the short Sacramento bench with the Anthony Peeler suspension. They kick it to Sprewell, who's picked up by Christie. Shot clock in the back. And inside, it's Weber. So on Stojakovic. One of the big adjustments Minnesota made in this series, putting Sprewell on Bibby and Christie for three. Again, the, the penetration. Bibby did a nice job. He took his dribble. He let the big man come off the pick and roll, and then he continued into the lane. Cassell once again in the lane. Both the point guards now really get into a rhythm here early in this game. Reminds me of game one in this series. And Miller to Christie again. Two in a row. And he 
he's capable of having big nights. We know that. He's hit some critical shots in this series. Remember, at the end of game one, hit a big three point shot to help seal the deal here for Sacramento. His shooting statistics aren't very good, Christie's, but his numbers, his production is. Hassel with the later right off the Yankovic. Open mid range jumper, getting the ball into the heart of the defense, and Garnett finding the open man. Bibby is 0 2. Christie intercepted by Kevin Garnett. Five Sacramento turnovers. Free win. Russell got it. And a Kings foul inside. That's when Latrell Sprewell is his most dangerous. When you get into open court situations where he can use his speed, we saw it here in game five when he was playing at a different level than anybody else on the floor. We saw it in game six. Tonight he's gotten off to a slow start, but he must keep attacking. Manson comes in. Irvin Johnson is out. So they lessen their size a bit, but they sure get a lot of defensive hustle and energy with Manson. Well, they got to keep him off the offensive boards. That's what he does best. Sprewell hustle with the offensive rebound. Hustle plays. Shot. And the Timberwolves have their biggest lead tonight. So when we talked to Rick Allen before the game, this is exactly what he didn't want to have happen. His team dig a hole here in the first period. Sacramento, 4 of 12. Chris Weber. How do you see Weber fitting into tonight in the, the context of this offense and this the severity of this game? He's a catch and shoot player now, so he's going to depend so much on guys getting him open shots in rhythm. And Cassell continues his hot streak, 4 of 6. And Sam Cassell with the game high, 9 points. Well, he's gone away from that 3. He's in the mid range game now, where all of a sudden he's getting the better lift on his shot rather than shooting the ball so deep on the floor. And Stiakovic with Hassel on him and a quick hand check on Trenton Hassel, his first. Sacramento Kings and the Minnesota Timberwolves battling in Game 7 with a chance to go to the Western Conference Finals and a date with the Los Angeles Lakers. Has come out ready in Game 7. Well, we talked about his struggles in Games 2 and 6 after the wonderful game in Game 1 tonight. He's 4 of 6, has 9 points. In any timeout situation when he goes to the bench, He's wearing these wires that are padded up and they hook up the machine. It's an electrical stimulator to try to keep the spasms down in his back. I can tell you from personal experience, the more the ball goes in the basket, the less that back hurts. <laughs> Timberwolves, Doug, have taken seven more shots from the field than Sacramento. Well, they've got 20 shots at the basket, 13 for Sacramento. The more shots at the basket, the better chance of winning. Five turnovers already, already for Sacramento and four offensive rebounds for Minnesota. They're more aggressive. Neither team made a move after that timeout as Kevin Garnett vacuums in his fourth rebound tonight. And Cassell at the game high nine. Timberwolves are shooting 45%, getting seven of their last 10 shots. It's very difficult to play a smaller guard on Sam Cassell because he's a very good low post player. And he loves to get down there and play in the low post. And then they'll start double teaming and he'll free up shots for his teammates. We just saw Rodney Buford set the check in. Minnesota's on a 10 to 4 run. Weber against Garnett. See, Kevin, one of the things when you're Sacramento, you're shorthanded. So when you dig yourself a hole, it's very difficult for Rick Adelman to sub and take his best players out because you're playing in from behind. That's why it's so important to Sacramento get off to a good start. Kassam with the Stojakovic rebound. And in this game, it's Minnesota plus four in that category. Brad Miller and Manson quickly on him. Now, Miller, not a crowd favorite here. Remember Derek Martin in game ejected in a little skirmish. Mike Bibby is 0 of 3 from the field so far. Threw up an air ball right there. Garnett. Hassel. Hassel had an open 10-footer. Put it on the floor and made it a tougher shot. He should have shot it the minute he caught it. Miller off the bench has not taken a shot as Christie unleashes. 
Garnett the other way. Kevin with six points. Both teams have a foul to give in the final 47 seconds. Nice fake by Cassell. A foul on Christian. And that's going to be Bibby's second foul. Right. And Bibby again, picks it up. And, and again, Kevin, they're playing shorthanded. Rodney Buford into the game. Now, remember, Mike Bibby picked up fouls in game six, had to set out all but four minutes of the third quarter. So they have really struggled when he has been on the bench or in foul trouble in this series. So we'll see how they play now with Mike Bibby in foul trouble. And this brings in the first real taste of the Peeler suspension. Out for two games tonight. And a charge on the Timberwolves. And it goes on Cassell. Make it Madsen away from the ball. Well, this was the game six situation where Kevin Garnett and Anthony Peeler, two very good friends, got caught up. A couple elbows. Peter throws one to the head and suspended for two games. Stoyakovic unloads a three. So they have fought themselves back, trailed by only five, and a welcome sight in Sacramento when Page is knocking down that three. And now the Kings are two of four, shooting three-point shots tonight. Timberwolves have not hit above the arc. And Spreewell with Garnett setting a screen. Fred Hoiberg in the game for the first time. And Garnett over Weber. And a foul on Chris Weber. Just to finish up on the Peeler story, I talked today with Stu Jackson from the NBA office, and he said the two-game suspension was because of the totality of those actions, the shot in the gut and then to the head. He said it was not a suspension for the first move and a suspension game two for a second hit. They were, it was the totality of it. And he said that the key was Peeler going over the shoulder and hitting him in the head. Yeah. And he said we just can't because of the injury factor. The NBA cannot tolerate that. Absolutely, and it was the severity with, with which he threw the elbow, and if Sacramento advances, he would have to miss game one of the Western Conference Finals. But Garnett, it's important he gets to the free throw line. It's, it's amazing in the wins and the losses. When he gets to that line and the wins about nine times a game, only three in the losses, so he has got to be aggressive. Foul to give for Minnesota. Great defense by Garnett. That takes us to the end of the first quarter where the Timberwolves shot 43%. Sam Cassell with the electric stem on that back, which has been a nuisance these entire playoffs. Coming up big with the great start, 5 of 8, and a game-high 11 points. They call him Big Game Sam. He's known for these kind of games in the biggest of moments. He's off to a wonderful start here tonight. In this seventh game, the Western Conference semifinals, the Minnesota Timberwolves have not trailed. Their big lead has been 10. We've had no ties in this contest. And Kevin Garnett has started like the MVP that he is. Well, we talked about being his all-round game. You see the pass. He gets in the lane. He finds the open shooter. Backs down Chris Weber. This was his first shot of the game that he knocked in. His rebounding. And then his steals, his defense. He's filling up the stat sheet, stepping out, shooting the jump shots. It's his all-round brilliance that has made him the MVP. First quarter, seven points, six rebounds, two assists, three steals, and more importantly, no turnovers. He's off to a great start. And the other big name in this game is Mike Bibby on the Sacramento bench with no points, two fouls, and a single assist. Rodney Buford is in with Stiakovich, Miller, Divac, and Christie. Starting the second quarter, Madsen is on Miller. Stiakovic. And a Kevin Garnett rebound, and that is number seven. Sacramento's got to do a better job screening Hassel to free up Stoyakovich. It's only his third shot attempt of the game. He needs to get 20 field goal attempts. And the guard comparison with Cassell winning that battle. Sam is still on the bench, as is Bibby. Here is Hoiberg with Spreewell, Garnett, Hassel, and Madsen to begin the second quarter. Three to shoot for Garnett. Kevin is three of five. Now Christie is the primary ball handler with Mike Bibby being down, as you talked about. But uh, when Bibby's out, they have struggled to run their offense smoothly. And Christie for two. Stiakovic with an offensive rebound and a dish to Christie inside. Garnett knocking it away and finally taking it out of the air. A four on one. And Sprewell can't catch up with the pass. Well, Sprewell tried to do something before he caught the basketball. It was okay. He was looking back. But look at Garnett. He just 
sort of bluffs at the shot block there and then he goes up and catches the ball out of the air. Watch him go up. Rides the top of the elevator and just takes the ball out of the air. He picked the top four of the penthouse to get yes, that one. Yes, he did, but we know he can afford a penthouse, that's for sure. And Buford with the miss, Manson with the rebound. Minnesota has not scored from the field in over four minutes, going back to the first quarter. Garnett. He's missed two in a row. He's getting a little tired. Clifford's going to have to maybe give him a little bit of a rest here. Christie lasers one inside Stiakovic. Is he tired? Another layup miss. That's three layups here early in the game. Page has missed a couple. We just saw Doug Christie miss one. I think you're going to see Irvin Johnson come in right now to give Kevin Garnett just a little bit of rest. And Serbiak's going to come in for some offense as Hoiberg misses the shot. Stiakovic grabs onto his sixth rebound. And here come the Kings, Doug, who are 0 of 6 so far in the early stages of this second quarter. Well, they have to be very fortunate. They're only down six points right now. And you can see they're going to page on every possession here to try to get him some shots. Good screen by Miller for Stiakovic. The shot just is not there. One of six for Pajan. Well, Hassel's done a nice job. That was an open shot. He normally makes those, but most every other shot has been under duress. Hoiberg has had a great series. Garnett again. Kevin's got a couple of assists. Sprewell for three. Well, Sprewell has struggled from the floor. Shot clock winding down. Christie looked like he was going to fake a timeout there. Rick Adelman wanted a timeout. That shot of Sprewell pushes it back to a nine-point lead. At the end of the first quarter, this was Sam Cassell. What a lot of people do not realize, it's the left side of his hip that started his back problems. And during the end of the first quarter, he was icing his the left side of his hip and also his back. The interesting thing, Kevin and Duck, he told me yesterday is, why complain about a sore back? It's not going to help anything. He said, just try to keep me out of tonight's game. He has been extremely effective, guys. Well, gets a lengthy rest right there. Kevin, I'll give you some numbers here. We played a little over 15 minutes. Sacramento's missed 18 shots. They have no second chance points. They have no fast break points. And they have no free throws. So they've done nothing to make up for their poor shooting. They're very fortunate they're only down nine. And Doug, Sacramento only has 16 points in 15 minutes. It's Buford. Rebound by Hoiberg. They got Wally Serbiak in now. And Garnett is taking a breather with Sprewell on the Minnesota bench. Mike Bibby is back in the game with an 0-3 start. And Hoiberg to Serbia. Buford defended. The slot normally held for Anthony Peeler on that end. <laughs> and the Timberwolves have their biggest lead tonight. That wasn't pretty, but he worked very hard for that. You can see Derek Martin now is not the backup point guard. They're going with Hoiberg. And Serbiak in there with Cassell, so he wants his better players on the floor. It's a better lineup as Hoiberg just picks up a foul. The Sacramento Kings are shooting 27%. They've missed their last eight from the floor. But you got it. You've got to do some hustle plays. They they have no, they've got two baskets in the paint, no free throws. I mean, you've got to make something happen at the rim. Everything's a jump shot. And Devox grinding inside against Irvin Johnson. We still go back, though, to Mike Bibby. That's the second on Irvin Johnson, the starting center for the Timberwolves, because when Bibby goes, this whole team benefits. He sets up Stiakovic, he sets up Weber, and his own game then develops very nicely. Well, he's make, he makes the game easier for everybody else. And Kevin Garnett, we, we talked about it in the open. He said, if we can control Bibby, we can win the game. And right now they're doing that, and they have an 11-point lead. And there's... Wadi Divac at the line. The playoffs continue Friday night here on TNT. Game one, Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the winner of tonight's game. It's exclusive coverage on TNT as you see Dick Bavetta. The horn sounded just as Vladi was getting ready to put that shot in the air from the strike. Kings tonight, one of two from the line. Minnesota, two of three. 
you can you can see the importance of Mike Bibby staying out of foul trouble because Christie now is resting. He's got to get a little bit of a rest, and you have to have Mike Bibby on the floor with Rodney Buford. You need a ball handler. Buford can do a good job defensively. He can make some shots, but he can't run your team. And that's that's where they really miss Bobby Jackson with that backup point guard situation. It's really put them in a hole now, especially with Peter being out. Take a look at Bobby Jackson, who continues to work out, but in cities tonight, here comes Sam Cassell with the game high 11. Timberwolves fifth turnover. Stigakovic for three. Hoiberg with the rebound. See, Bibby is playing Hoiberg, and Rodney Buford is playing Cassell, so they're resting Bibby off the ball so he won't pick up his third foul. Cassell. And Bibby's got the ball, and he leads his team the other way, looking for Sacramento's first field goal in over five minutes. Quite a drought. The mismatch on Johnson. And Bibby is 0 for another Hoiberg Minnesota rebound. When Sacramento doesn't get the ball to the weak side of the floor and they quick shoot it, they play right in the hands of Minnesota. And that's when we talked to Rick Adelman before the game. We got to move the basketball tonight. It's stuck on one side of the floor. Serbia and tapped out, and Serbia gets it on the volleyball. Timberwolves two of seven from the field in this quarter. And Serbia has given Minnesota a lead of 12. He's got four off the bench. Here come the Kings. Oh, of ten from the floor in the second quarter. Mike Bibby with a foul on Mark Madsen. Madsen picks up his second personal foul of the game. You know, if there was a shining light in game six for Minnesota, it really was Wally Serbiak. He struggled all years with injury. We did a game early in the year in San Antonio when he was first coming back, and it was garbage time. He played the second half and had a big second half, and Flip Saunders thought that propelled him to start playing well. He had a great second half the other night in a blowout game. They're hoping that that will be the same scenario that will play over for him. Remember now, they struggled when they started getting Zerbiak back and Michael Olukani and all the guys. They went through that little period that Sacramento went through when Weber, Weber came back from injury. So they're hoping that the second half of game six served as a way for Wally Zerbiak to get himself back in the flow with his offense. And just as he was feeling good about his game, he broke those small bones in the lower part of his back in the Denver series. Sam Cassell, a Zerbiak offensive rebound, keeping it alive with a corkscrew move. And the Timberwolves have their biggest lead again as the Kings take it the other way with only two points this quarter. Brad Miller. Minnesota shooting 42%. It's Garnett. Buford with the rebound. Minnesota's doing a better job moving the basketball right now than Sacramento. They're making the extra pass. Their shots are not as contested. Every shot that Sacramento shoots now is a contested shot. Here's Weber back out on the floor. Seven minutes for Sacramento without a field goal until that one nailed by Mike Bibby, his first hit of the game from the floor. One of five for Bibby and breaks a drought of seven minutes and six seconds for the Kings. Serbiak and Bibby are an interesting matchup down low, and Serbiak just picked up a foul, pushing off on Bibby. Well, see, Bibby can get away playing Hassel because Hassel's not a primary offensive player. When Serbiak comes in the game, he has to guard him. That's a bad play by Wally. He had a good post position, and he fouled, but this is what he's giving him. Nice little energy and lift off the bench. He has six points. Flip Saunders said he had a great practice yesterday, and it shows tonight. Playoffs on TNT tonight for Minneapolis being brought to you by Heineken. It's all about the beer, Heineken. And by Hyundai, when your car comes with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. Let's now go around the NBA with our Bud Light headlines. The Indiana Pacers holding off a late Miami rally and with a series clinching win last night by three. They now await the winner of the Piston Net Eastern Conference semifinal series. Seventh game coming up. Grizzly President J. 
Jerry West, the executive of the year, and the Lakers are waiting in Los Angeles and watching our game tonight and waiting who they will play in the Western Conference Finals, which begin exclusively on TNT on Friday, either Sacramento or Minnesota. We came into this game, we came into this series thinking about Mike Bibby and what his numbers meant to Sacramento's success. Well, he's off to a one for five start, only one assist and two turnovers. Five minutes to play as Weber tries to get it inside. It's loose and rolling out of bounds and kicked out of play by Minnesota. We got 11 seconds on the shot clock. Sacramento was 8 of 30. They missed 22 shots and only have three offensive rebounds. So when you're not shooting well, you've got to manufacture some points. They only have 20 points here early in, the, in this uh, first half. Doug Christie now gets the breather on the bench. It's Sprewell racing the other way. Garnett, Irvin Johnson. Right in front of Irvin Johnson missing again. 0 3. That's how unselfish Kevin Garnett is. I mean, he should have taken that shot, and he throws it to Irvin Johnson, who's really a non shooter. And now Garnett goes against Bibby. And Buford wide open for three. And a good offensive rebound by Miller, and a three by Bibby. And that goes in, and he is now hit two in a row. Second chance point. You miss the shot, you get an offensive rebound, you kick it out to Bibby, and they've clawed back to eight. So right now, Minnesota cannot have a letdown. We know Sacramento has the ability to come roaring back. Then no lead changes and no ties in this game. Timberwolves have led by 13. Kings have never led. Shot clock is down to five for Serbia. See, Bibby can't guard him down there in the post. He can guard Hassel because they won't go to him. Serbiak is a primary offensive player, so with him being healthy, that changes their matchup. You can't hide Mike Bibby with fouls. Serbiak off the bench with eight points. They got Sprewell on Bibby, and a foul called on Latrell Sprewell. <laughs> Truth be told, Sacramento only has one true point guard, and that's Bibby right there. Early foul trouble with two. When he's out, like you mentioned before, it becomes a bit stagnant on their offensive end. Well, you, you see what it's done. I mean, they're shooting 28%. They've, they're two of five in the foul line. No fast break jump points. They've hit a three second chance point. They haven't gotten to the free throw line except for two made free throws. So right now they're being out hustled. Doug Christie is back in, and Weber is wide open. No lead is safe for either one of these teams. We've seen some unbelievable things in games one and two already in this series and in game three. Look on the Timberwolves, whose offensive game is based on efficiency. And tonight, they've got six assists and 15 made field goals. Got to go back to Serbiak. If they double team, it'll free up an open shooter. This time, Serbiak takes it inside. And Christie comes out of there with it. Christie to Stiakovic and Miller the win and a Minnesota foul. And Irvin Johnson picks up his third personal for the Timberwolves. This is where Rick Adelman hopes all the big games this team has played in will kick in. They've gotten off to a bad start, but they've played in a lot of big games. They've played on the road. They've had their heart broken on many occasions. This is when they really have to pull together. And as poorly as they played in the first half, Kevin, if they can be within six points, they'll be in good shape. Yeah, Doug, third consecutive year they've played in a seven-game series. Losing the last two to the Lakers and 0-2 in the Western Conference Finals as Johnson is now on the bench and Manson has taken his place. And Miller hits. The, the, the game with the Lakers, the seventh game at home, that's the one that sticks with this team. They still that talk was, about that it, That was right. the crusher. They, and they, you see Jeff Petrie, who's done a magnificent job here, but so many questions about this team. If they lose this series, where, where are they heading? Got a lot of older players on this team. This team is built to win right now. Points by Miller is the first bench point of the game. Cassell. Barnett and right through the hands of Mark Madsen, who's had a wonderful series for the Timberwolves. Well, he's got to catch and finish that. Garnett makes a great play. Spoon feeds him here for a dunk, and just too energy, too much energy, too energy, too much uh, for Madsen, and he never got into a rhythm.
Ernie Johnson in Atlanta's Studio A. Coming up in just a few minutes, it's the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report. Charles Barkley's here, so is Kenny Smith, and so is Steve Kerr. They'll give you their spin on the first half, and then we'll unveil a segment called The Shooter's Touch as Steve Kerr breaks down the Mike Bibby Latrell Spreewell duel. All that on the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report. Back to Kenny. EJ, thank you very much. We're taking a look at the top six players in this game, the big three from each team. Well, you look at the combined shooting for the Sacramento, seven of 19, Stoyakovich one of seven, maybe two of six, so they're combined three of 13, Weber four for six, and then Spreewell, Garnett, and Gazelle, what they have done, Garnett, because they shooting it well, Spreewell only one of six. That is a seven point difference in the game, seven points separating the big three from each team and there's Manson on Miller screen for Bibby for two rebound by Kevin Garnett who now has 12 rebounds in the game for Minnesota and the Timberwolves are plus eight in rebounding tonight Spreewell Latrell Spreewell has five points only one player in this game in double figures. That's Sam Cassell's 11 points. Brad Miller, more bench points. Hits a two. He's got three for the game. That shot there is, is there for their big men. Remember, when Bibby gets inside, the big men are plugging the lane for Minnesota, and that jump shot will be there. That's what Rick Adelman talks about, getting the ball to the weak side of the floor. Run up three of seven. Miller draws a foul. Minnesota's whole thing is keep Bibby out of the lane. Well, when he gets in the lane, watch what happens. Madsen steps in to help, and look who's wide open, Brad Miller. That's the shot we talked about in the open. That will be there if Sacramento will have patience, take their time, and get the ball to the other side of the floor. Here's Garnett at the free throw line, who has only been averaging six free throw attempts a game in this series. And here is his third attempt tonight at an all-access look at the NBA playoffs. Tune into the NBA TV playoff show Destination Finals. That's every weeknight at 6 p.m. only on NBA TV. He's got to take more than six a game. Well, be aggressive, go to the bat. He's so good at leaping away from contact. Sometimes you've got to jump in and you got to make the referees blow the whistle. Cassell trying to guard Christie. Knocked away with another Sacramento turnover. They now have eight. Minnesota has seven. That passing lane is not there. The opposite big man from Minnesota is dropping back and taking away their layups. That's their game plan. Vivian Sprewell with the mismatch here. Serbian, whose inside game tonight has been fun to watch. Normal a perimeter player. Stiakovic picks up the foul. As Serbiak has energized the Timberwolves off the bench with eight points in eight minutes. You see, the problem you have now is Mike Bibby has got to either play Cassell, Serbiak, or Sprewell. Every one of those guys can score. So now you can't hide him on a Hassel or a Hoiberg off the basketball. So now they have a mismatch, and they're going to that every opportunity. Whoever Mike Bibby's guarding, they're trying to go in the post and create a mismatch. So here's Serbiak at the free throw line with his first attempt tonight from the strike. And in this series, Serbiak is now 7 of 8. As they take out Madsen, they bring in Gary Trent. Madsen again gives him quality minutes off the bench. He heads there with a couple rebounds and some nice defense. You know, it's amazing how coaches know their players. Yesterday, Wally Serbiak had a great practice. Rick Excuse me, uh, Flip Saunders said I was very confident he was going to have a great game tonight, and he is. Including three offensive rebounds for Wally Serbia. Weber. Stiakovic. Deflected with the shot clock at five for Doug Christie around Kevin Garnett. That was a hard shot. Challenge Serbiak, the only players in this game in double figures. No fouls to give either way. Kevin Garnett. And Miller with the rebound off the bench. He's collected three. To get a quick two for one here, Bibby pulls up and shoots the shot quickly. 
He tries, he's inside, they let him penetrate, something that is against the rules against Sacramento. Don't let him get in the lane. And the foul goes on Trent for the first time. Well, when you play Peja Stojakovic, you have got to stay. You've got to keep chasing him. You've got to stay on that right hand and make him be a passer. And that's exactly what Wally Zerbeck did on that play. We've seen Hassel do that. Keep chasing. Don't give up on the play. Get a hand up in his face and make him take a tough shot. Now Sacramento from the free throw line, three of eight. Here comes Devonts back in the game for Miller. Minnesota from the free throw line, six of seven. So that has worked well for the Timberwolves to at the very least stay abreast of the Kings at the line. Maybe with all seven of his points in this second quarter. Psychologically, for Sacramento, you want to keep this lead under double digits. Garnett has not scored from the field in this quarter as Casal takes it in and a foul on the Kings. Inside and underneath, and Peja picks up his second foul. So here's the shooting of the big three. Stiakovic is one of seven. Bibby is two of seven. Really, the only one answering the call is Chris Weber, four of six. And here is Cassell at the free throw line for the Timberwolves. Cassell got off to the great start. He slowed down a little bit in this second period. The game has slowed down. The defense has picked up. It's his first point this quarter. Hassel back in the game for defensive purposes. And Wally Serbiak tonight, it's Wally's world here in Minneapolis. A crowd favorite and playing very well. Ten points in nine minutes for Serbiak and Cassell with the game high at 13. Final 15 seconds of the half. into Chris Weber and a Garnett foul. What a great find there, Mike Bibby. It looked like he had nowhere to go. He was hung up. I thought he was going to force a shot. And at the last minute, he spotted Chris Weber underneath the basket. 3.9 seconds. Still a lot of time, though. So after these free throws, Minnesota, excuse me, Sacramento's going to make sure they get back on defense. Weber 76% from the line in this series. Weber now is 0 of 2 from the strike. He has a Kings high eight points in a timeout. Well, Flip Saunders is going to take a 20 second timeout. What he's going to do, he's going to set up a play here to try to sprint out and get the last shot of the half. So he's drawing up a special play to try to get a field goal, steal a basket going into halftime. Well, Doug, let's go back to how we opened up our show tonight. Minnesota has the top seed in the Western Conference, meaning as long as they are alive, they have home court. This is why it was so valuable to have that number one seed. Ironically enough, in a late regular season win for the Timberwolves in Sacramento, they replaced the Kings in that number one slot. Well, and, and we know Sacramento finished the season horribly with some bad losses, so they dug a hole to put themselves in this position. Can they get out of it? Darius Sengaila has come in for the final 3.9 seconds with Chris Weber at the free throw line. Wally Zerbiak has checked back in for offensive purposes. Weber all three. And Trent takes this to halftime. That's a downer for Sacramento. Chris Weber walks up, misses two free throws at the end of the half. The lead stays at 10, double digits, instead of getting it under 10 to 8. The two big misses, even though it's just halftime, psychologically going in, that's a downer. Let's go to Cheryl Miller. Score, so Wally steps up and he has 10 points off the bench, but the Kings 33% shooting. They miss seven free throws, four of 11, get beaten second chance points by seven, steals by four. It's the lowest scoring half of the season for the Kings. I mean, that's not going to get it done. I mean, it's you know, now or tomorrow is summertime, and the finality of that, Kevin, is you don't gradually get into the offseason. You lose, you're done. 
Dick Vivetta just told me there is a clock problem right now. They're going to leave both teams on the sideline until it is rectified. An electrician is working on it right now. Although that electrician isn't Cheryl Miller, we will send you to Cheryl right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kevin and Coach. In 24 minutes, Peja Sorakovic is one for seven, and out of those seven shots, he had six shots contested. Two shots were blocked by Kevin Garnett in the paint, so he really only had one open look. Now, his game is so similar, just to mention a few of the players in the league, New Jersey's Richard Hamilton, and I give my, give my own little brother, Reggie Miller, in terms of movement without the ball. These guys use up so much energy, plus you throw in the fact that this has been such a grueling series. Coach, my question to you, how much is fatigue? going to be an issue for Peja in the second half. Well, Cheryl, the one thing that Minnesota can do, they can throw three different defenders, even four different defenders at him, and keep a fresh body on him all the time. They start out with Hassel, they can come in with Hoiberg, they can play Zerbiak on him, they can put Sprewell on him. But right now, he's got to put fatigue in the back of his mind. Charles talked about it. He was third in the MVP voting, and he has to step up. This is game seven. Put that in the background and start making shots. So you've seen our Chrysler game summary, and here we go beginning the second half. Bibby Stojakovic with Hassel with the defense and a big way to start for the Sacramento Kings. Well, they screened for him. They set a double screen that time, and I don't think Sacramento's been doing a good job screening. Their big men have to go down and headhunt and free him open for shots. Kings have hit four threes, and Sprewell answers at the other end with two. And Sprewell now with seven. Let's set the lineups. Divots, Christie, Weber, Bibby, and Stiakovic with the ball. That's for Sacramento. Garnett is on Weber. Hassel with Johnson Cassell out there. And Sprewell, the Minnesota Five, and two more for the Kings. And inside, it's Weber, who is five of seven. Well, good execution. They get a screen roll layup, and they get a nice double screen for Stiakovic and get a three. Five quick points. Rebound by Mike Bibby. The Kings have never led. Minnesota's biggest lead has been 13. And Weber thinking about three. And d uncover uncovered, which the Arkovich providing some interference down low. And Flip Saunders here is not going to watch much more of this. If he doesn't get a score on this possession, Sacramento does. He's going to have to take a timeout. All, they, all that hard work they did in the first half has been cut in half in a minute and a half. All that hard work in the season. I and mean, this is the seventh game. It's either a season that ends or extends. Screed out for three. And a rebound by Weber, who keeps his balance and saves it. And Weber now with five rebounds. Stiakovic in this game seven, hitting his first offering in the second half. The winner of this game plays the Los Angeles Lakers. Screed out the other end. And the foul. That's how fragile it is for Sacramento when you're playing uphill. Stojakovic misses a jumper that would cut it to three. And this is what Sprewell has done in games five and six. He has put his head down and he's attacked the front of that rim and given them, in, given them great energy. You see, he's one of the few guys on this team that goes to the basket. This is a jump shooting team. And that's, so when, that's why they got him in the offseason. And when he does that, he gives them a different look to their attack that they don't have without him. Mike Bibby just picked up his third foul. Let's Bibby is 2 of 7. Weber over Kevin Garnett. And Divac with the offensive rebound. Had the ball slapped away. Cassell was in there defending. And Sam picks up his first. The importance now of knocking down free throws. 4 of 11 for Sacramento in the first half. They missed 7 free throws. This is a team that shot over 80% in the regular season. And in big games, Free throws come to the forefront. Kevin, when they lost that heartbreaking game to the Lakers, game seven at home, they missed 14 of 30 free throws and lost an overtime game. That free throw line is so vital in close, low-scoring games when the pressure is on. And there you see the numbers. There were two of 20 from the three-point line and missed 14 free throws. That will not get it done in a big game. D-Box is 3 of 4 from the stripe, and the Kings as a team, 6 of 13. They're taking three more attempts than the Timberwolves tonight. Sprewell with a lot of purple around him, nonetheless gets it in. Again, that slashing move in the lane. Sprewell got off to a slow start shooting the basketball. He was 2 for 8 at the half. That's hit two baskets here to push Sacramento back 
to a seven point deficit. The winner in this game seven advances. So far leading scorer is Tam Cassell. Timberwolves have never trailed. Christie for three. And a couple of threes by the Kings who trailed by ten at halftime. Now they're with in four points with three minutes gone in the third quarter. Sal playing with the bad back and Garnett held by Weber. No call made. Even d gave a little bump and still no call, but the MVP's got 11. Well, his ability to go up and hold that ball in one hand and run and go away from the defense. Weber with Johnson on him. Johnson with the steal. And nine Kings turnovers. Seven for Minnesota. Spreewell. court plays the trails free well it's Bibby and Christie comes up with it and Doug Christie continues to shoot well 50 percent from the field and a Sacramento 12 points well, he's keeping him in the game he's hit a couple threes when they get off the cold start he's the only one making any shots Hit trap on Cassell and Garnett against Devox and a foul on Vladi. That's number one on him. Kevin Garnett, watch how his ability to get up and extend. Look at the extension. And then on the way down, just softly flips the ball at the basket. And then Latrice Sprewell follows him. Three quick baskets here. Two slashing in the open court, one in the half court game. So he's gotten off to a good start here after a slow first half. Well, we may have had some nervous energy to begin the game as Garnett puts up a beauty inside. And Minnesota is back up by eight. We may have had some nervous energy to begin the game. But to begin the second half, it has been a race. Well, it gets down after about the first five minutes to who can execute the best. And right now, that's Minnesota. And Weber inside. Rebound by Kevin Garnett. He gets his 14th. The Timberwolves have gone six of eight to begin the second half. Hassel. Devox with the rebound. See, Chris Webber just does not have the ability to finish at the basket anymore. He used to be such a powerful athletic player. Now he has to finger roll and flip those shots, and he misses a lot of easy shots around the basket, Kevin. Stankovic had it knocked away. Do you sense that Weber is playing within the offensive schemes of Sacramento tonight? I I've sensed here in the third quarter a couple times right now where Sacramento's starting to go one-on-one. -on -one. That will not get it done for them. Weber one-on-one, -on -one, Stojakovic, this is a team. This is a team that depends on each other. And when they try to do it by themselves, it costs them dearly. You see his ability to go. He gets to the basket, but look at the finish. He used to go up and dunk that ball easily with two hands. The struggles are there with his leg. They trail by eight. Our game seven tonight in the 2004 NBA playoffs semifinals on TNT being brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Over 2,800 nonstop daily flights to 60 destinations all across the country. And by Adidas. Impossible is nothing. Doug, numbers can tell the story, and the Timberwolves right now with the lead, as they have had all game long. Here are some things that you've been watching. Well, one of the things that Minnesota's done is they've taken away Sacramento's layups. That was one of their goals. Take away their easy scores. They've made them a three-point shooting team. So Sacramento's made four more three-pointers, but Minnesota winning every other battle. And so what they've tried to do, take away the layups, make them shoot jumpers, contest them, get a hand in the face, and they think they'll win the series. And Doug, the Kings are averaging about 11 fast break points per game in this series. Not a single fast break Sacramento point tonight. It's Weber for two. Casal with the rebound. And Garnett with Divac and Stiakovic there. It's a mismatch there. Vladi is going to try to keep his body in front of him, but normally you get help, and that's what, that time Garnett spun away from the double team and was one-on-one -on -one with Vladi. That's a no contest. It's Bibby, two of seven, rejected by Kevin Garnett. Shot clock at 10. Christie, Bibby for three. Good. 
And the Kings have gone 6 of 11 above the arc. Minnesota 1 of 5. And they're hanging around. I mean, it's only a 7-point game. But if you watch this game, it almost feels like Minnesota should be up by 20. It's Garnett and Sprewell accounting for all of the third quarter points for the Timberwolves. A mismatch with Bibby on Garnett. Sprewell around Weber. And Garnett with a rebound. He's got 15. The will. The will to win. Kevin Garnett. He was so disappointed in his game one effort here when he was 6 of 21. Played out of character. Sacramento won the game. And tonight, just working feverishly in that lane. The block shot. We saw the score, the offensive rebound, and this is what we showed in our open. This passion and this energy, that's what his team feeds off of. And they know he's their best player, and when he leads, they follow. And Kevin Garnett knocks in his 16th point. He's got two block shots, three fouls on Stojakovic. You just saw Kevin McHale, the architect of this team, and a guy who finished second to Jerry West, the executive of the year, but if anybody deserved consideration, with nine new faces on a playoff roster as compared to a season ago, McHale had to be right up there. And the two guys who held that together early in the season, they got off to a 9-10 and 10 start. And it was Flip Saunders and Kevin Garnett, their relationship, their ability to hold things together until it could get in sync. And once it did, they carved out the best record in the West. 38% Sacramento shooting tonight. Stiakovic for three. Sprewell with the rebound. Minnesota is plus eight in rebounding tonight. Timberwolves on a 10 to 4 run as Madsen, freshly off the bench, turns it over for a second time underneath tonight. Well, he, he's trying to go too fast. He's got to slow down, just catch the ball, and then finish. He's trying to do something before he catches it. Miller off the bench and in. Here's Bibby. Ten Sacramento turnovers. And ahead it goes, and Christie will save that. Well, that won't even try to get it. Sam Cassell, you can see his limited mobility. When he tries to work too hard off his screen roll, he struggled. When he played well early, it was open shots. Trying to do too much. And that's gotten himself in trouble. That was a turnover without getting a shot at the basket. And the first fast break points by Sacramento tonight. Four and a half in the third. Kevin Garnett, who from the field tonight, has gone 6 of 13 with a Minnesota high 17 points. Brad Miller, two of three with five. There's those open jump shots again. The big man from Sacramento is tough to defend them because they really don't post other than Weber. Body and Miller at their best really spotting up neither passing or shooting. They stepped up, they made some shots, and a little nervous crowd here right now, Kevin. As I said before, it seems like Minnesota's dominated this game, but they only lead by five. In a game seven, it's winner go home on TNT. race inspired the six speed 200 horsepower acura rsx type s in this game seven the sacramento kings have never led they've trailed by as many as 13 points Sprewell's got 13 christie's got 14 and miller off the bench with five and bibby's got 10. kg with the game high 17. Well, Kevin, they're putting the ball in the basket now this period. Sacramento, after the horrendous first half shooting, they now have made 8 of 14 in this quarter, 3 of 4 from the three-point line. That's what you expect from Sacramento. They were number one in field goal percentage, number one in three, and they're starting to make shots, and they put the pressure on Minnesota. Now here's another steal. They're going to cut this lead down to three. Christie. 
And now the shooting, which was in the low 30s most of the first half, of Sacramento now up to 41%, nine in the quarter from Christie. Again, Sam Casale cannot be careless. He's got Doug Christie on him, one of the better defenders. Casale. I don't know if he was lobbing or shooting. I think he was shooting, and Cassell says that Christie hit him. No call. Ball sails out of bounds, and Sacramento's got it. Well, Sam got to, got to leave that alone. But that's three turnovers in this period for Sam. Got to take care of the basketball. Remember when Minnesota turns it over, that's when they get themselves in trouble. Calling it a missed shot. Hoiberg is in and fouls to Yankovic, who tried to take it inside. Second on Fred Hoiberg. Well, that missed shot was the same thing as a turnover. He got hung in the air, and at the last minute, he shot the thing out of bounds. Whether or not he got fouled, so he's had two turnovers and an air ball that went out of bounds. Remember, the Kings have been in this game seven before. This Minnesota team has not been in a game seven. They have been in one deciding game, a three for the tie. It's an air ball by Bibby, his second air ball from long range tonight. See, Hoiberg is in the game now for Hassel. They need another guy out there that can make a shot. When will we see Zerbiak? Cassell. And Manson turns it over for a third time, and each time dug underneath the basket. He should have used decaf coffee today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's just fumbling the ball out of bounds. He's so wound up. Minnesota's turned it over four times in this quarter, and 11 times for the game. And Miller off the bench with seven points. And a concerned Flip Saunders has watched his one-time 13-point lead evaporate down to a point with two and a half to play in the third. It's amazing what happens when you start making shots, isn't it? Game becomes really easy. Those plays start looking good. And as you said, this is the number one shooting regular season team in the NBA. Sacramento is Kevin Garnett doubled. Rebound by Miller. The Kings on an 11-2 run. And they have not led tonight. That is a shot by Christie and a foul. Now it's going to be interesting. Rodney Buford is coming into the game to spell Stojakovic. And what Rick Adelman is trying to do is buy two minutes and 16 seconds here. They've cut into the lead, trying to buy two minutes and 16 seconds to get Stojakovic rest so he can come in and finish the fourth period. This is going to be important for Minnesota now to try to take advantage of this with him out. Minnesota has not scored from the field in four and a half minutes. And taking the place of Anthony Peeler, a Peeler-esque defensive move by Buford, who knocks it away. The suspension by Peeler, so Buford plays, and Weber has just given the Sacramento Kings their first lead tonight. And Weber's put in 12, and the Kings up by one. Turnovers. Climbing back from 13 down. make it 6 of 14 in the game with a foul as he spun and Buford is the guy to get him for the kick. Now one of the things that Minnesota can't do is throw the ball into to Garnett and just stand and watch him play because it's out of character for him to, to try to throw up a 30 35 point game. He does it within the flow of everything. He's the guy we talked about filling up the stat sheet. So they have got to uh, call on other guys here to help out. That's why they have Sprewell and Cassell. Looks like Gary Trent is going to come in the game probably for Madsen. And I would expect you to see Wally Zerbiak here really quickly because they're struggling to find a way to score. Tomorrow night on ESPN, Game 7 between New Jersey and Detroit. Saturday night, it's Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Western Conference Finals begin on TNT Friday exclusively. This is your address for what should be a terrific Western Conference matchup. We know one team in the Lakers, the second free throw by Garnett goes astray. He is six of eight from the line and a game high 18 points. And the Lakers are sitting at home tonight watching, wondering, do we fly here to Minnesota or do we stay at home and let Sacramento come to us? It's Weber around Garnett. Kings have their biggest lead. This game has turned dramatically. The shooting of Sacramento in this period, where has this been? And just think of the ghosts that they fight off coming into this deciding game as Christie picks up a foul. They've been here two consecutive years, and this is the third straight trip as you take a look at Rick Adelman. 
and what these two teams have done when leading in the playoffs after three quarters. Well, look at the regular season, 47 to 6, 49, and in the playoffs, neither one of them have lost after when they've been leading after three. So that's how important it is for these teams to play with the lead. And the Flip Saunders nervously watching on, and here's Wally Zerbiak, who had the terrific first half. I'm sure one of the things that he's doing is he's got to monitor his minutes a little bit. The guy can't be in great shape, so probably would like to get maybe eight or ten minutes out of Wally here if he can. South in the line, 4 of 4. Minnesota is a team, 12 of 15. Taking two more free throws tonight than the Kings. Buford with the rebound. Minnesota has got a foul to give. And they're going in the post to Weber. He's had a lot of success in this period. Buford over Cassell. Weber taps it to Garnett. Here comes Sam Cassell. That was a quick two for one shot. Minnesota had not scored from the field in over six minutes until that hit. It's Sacramento's ball with 14 seconds on the shot clock. And you can see with Hoiberg in the game, Cassell is not guarding Bibby, it's Hoiberg. They want a bigger, stronger defender, a guy who can challenge his shot better than Cassell, who gets bumped off on those screen rolls. tie. It's a Hoiberg rebound and 10 seconds to play in the third. Well, Minnesota should have the lead unless they turn the ball over here. Trent. Oh! How do you miss that layup? What a comeback by the Sacramento Kings. Trent missing right underneath. The Timberwolves led by 10 with six and a half to play in the third. Then the Kings, Doug, close out the third quarter on a 15 to 7 run. Well, they start making shots. That's the whole key to their game. When they shoot the ball well, they defend better. They're right in the game. Miller Lite is a World Beer Cup gold medal winner. Miller Lite has half the carbs and fewer calories than Bud Light. Looks like someone just got lapped. Great taste, less filling Miller Lite. Good call. Today, you're a super painter with the amazing Wagner Wide Shot Power Painter. Paints almost anything faster than a brush. The Quick Touch Power Roller. One touch and you control a continuous flow of paint. The new Fine Spray gives you a professional finish every time. And the innovative paint crew handles the really big jobs. Let Wagner put the power to work for you, because there's always something out there that needs painting. Wagner. Paint fast. Paint smart. Can inspiration be comfortable? Can you navigate the world with ease? Yes. Does the most passenger room in its class make a difference? Yes. Can a Boston acoustic sound system create harmony? In a word, absolutely. The totally new Chrysler 300, starting at $23,595. Chrysler. Inspiration comes standard. at the Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle. No gas. Why not? Well, you don't get the flavor with gas. Charcoal is the thing. Any particular charcoal? It's Kingsford. Yeah? Kingsford. For the taste. Yeah. You get a better flavor out of your meat. Kingsford, because taste is everything.
Nokia, connecting people. On June 4th. We have a killer on the loose. Something wicked. This way comes. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Rated PG. Starts Friday, June 4th. Get into Taco Bell for the cheesy gordita crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. So cheesy. I like cheesy. To get crunchy, chewy, cheesy, and melty, think outside the bun. Western Conference Semifinals with Doug Collins and Cheryl Miller, Kevin Harlan. In the Timberwolves' third quarter, the last six and a half minutes, one of six and five turnovers. At one time, the Timberwolves led by 13. The Kings went up by two in that third. And as we start the fourth, it's Minnesota 62 to 60. Well, and after a woeful first half, 33% shooting, Sacramento 12 of 21. They made three threes in that period. That's how they got themselves back in the game. Hoiberg in there with Trent Cassell, Garnett, and Serbiak. They trap Hoiberg, Garnett into Trent, who missed his shot right underneath as the third quarter was coming to a close. And Christie for the tie. And here comes Hoiberg with Cassell. And Buford is in with the suspended peeler and a foul called on Buford for a second time. Cheryl, what do you have? The Flip Sanders headed into this next, uh, in the fourth quarter, said the next 12 minutes, guys, we want to execute, attack the basket, rebound, and run. And both Sam Cassell and Kevin Garnett were screaming, telling guys, we got to make the layups and the easy baskets. Well, Cheryl, just to follow up on that, Gary Trent has missed a layup and just fumbled the ball. Mark Madsen has fumbled three balls out of bounds. So Kevin Garnett is setting these guys up for easy scores. they got to catch the ball and finish. You know, Garnett, they're going to build a wall against him. They're going to try to make him pass the ball. So it's going to be his rebounding, shot blocking, and all the other things he brings. For Sacramento, this is Mike Bibby's time. This is when he has to lead his team on the road in Game 7. T-Box, Bibby. And out to a wide open, Brad Miller. Rebound by Mike Bibby as the Kings try to stop a Minnesota 6-0 run. Buford, that was a nice shot. Now, this guy can score. I mean, he was a big-time scorer at Creighton. Remember now, he played in the NBA Finals with Philly, so he's had experience in big games. They trust him. Sidney Lowe coached him at Memphis when he was there as the head coach. He said there was many games he led their team in scoring, so he can put points on the board. Garnett's got a game-high 18. Trent a screen for Hoberg's three. In this series in the fourth quarter, the Kings have shot 10% better than Minnesota. 43 to 33 in the fourth. Stoyakovich got a nice rest. Now Christie's getting a little bit of a rest. So Rodney Buford is buying nice minutes here for this team. Remember, normally that would be Anthony Peeler. He's buying minutes so Christie can get some rest. Stoyakovich maybe buy Bibby a couple minutes, but Weber now is getting a little bit of a rest. You'll see him to finish the game. So Rick Adam managing his timeouts and substitutions. Tie on that two-point shot by Buford. The Kings have basically come back with some outstanding three-point shooting, six of 13. 12 more points than Minnesota in that category. Garnett. And Dubon's with the rebound. Kings now only minus four in rebounding tonight. It was a double-digit deficit in the first half. Miller. Bibby looking to get in the lane every time he can to kick that ball out to one of his big men to shoot the basketball just like this. And Miller for the tie. Did not hit the rim. Shot clock. Buzzer expires. Now see Kevin Garnett has got to be tired right now. 
Can Flip Saunders rest him at all? Can he give him a minute somewhere along the lines? They're going to need every ounce of his energy to finish this game. That's why with Sacramento closing this lead down, it makes it very difficult to take Garnett out of the game. He's now playing point guard with Cassell sitting. And Zerbiak and Sprewell and Hoiberg on the floor. So he now is their point guard. Now Garnett and Stiankovic have both played the most minutes in this game. 36 apiece and ticking. Garnett. See, they just build a wall. What a great footwork. And Miller goes down, and Trent was right there, and a foul called on Minnesota's Gary Trent for the third time. Watch him step through this double team. The up and under has a point blank shot and just can't quite finish. Every one of those shots now so precious. Sacramento, Doug has started this quarter one of five with a turnover. And they're still only down two, so, so Minnesota's not taking advantage of it. Bibby for the lead. Rebound by Johnson off to Garnett. Here come the Timberwolves, 0 of four to start the fourth quarter. But Kevin Garnett, they're asking him to do it all. Now he's leading their team. With the point guard, Cassell, resting on the bench. Nice feed, Serbia, to Garnett. <laughs> this guy's got energy. He's going to need it all to close this. That breaks another long drought of scoring for Minnesota, almost four minutes. Now they're beginning to pull. With some momentum up by four points with 8.43 to play in regulation. See, this gives Kevin Garnett a chance to rest. Now he forced a Sacramento timeout, moving without the basketball, finding the open areas, a nice fadeaway jump shot. Rick Adelman, because of a slow start, has to call a timeout. This man now gets a much-deserved rest. He's going to need it all. I have told a ridiculous lie to back up a friend's ridiculous lie. I have just ordered a Coors Light for everyone in this bar. Put it on my buddy's tab. I have used my dog to dry my hands. I have no idea what this girl's name is. I have dated a girl for her brains. Big, huge brains. Great achievements deserve a great beer. Unleash the Rocky Mountain cold taste of Coors Light. Now, if you don't click it, expect a ticket. Cops write tickets because safety belts save lives. So click it or ticket. Human life means nothing to these people. There's an active cell in I place. I know about the subways. Juliana Margulies, Dylan McDermott. Our cell versus their cell. I like it. The Grid, coming this July exclusively on TNT. Hyundai Initial Quality is winning people over. The Hyundai Sonata was just named the highest ranked entry midsize car in Initial Quality by J.D. Power & Associates. That dedication to quality lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. And the feature-packed Hyundai Sonata starts for as little as $14,539. So don't buy another sedan before you check out the highest ranked Hyundai Sonata. Hyundai, win. Get a 2004 Sonata for just $14,539 at your local Hyundai dealer. So you want to work here, huh? Yeah. Well, with our Jiffy Lube Signature Service oil change, we do things differently. Really? First, we replace the old oil, then we replace the oil filter. Then we inspect the wiper blades, air filtration system, and lights. Really? After vacuuming, we clean the windows. Windows? A thorough check of all the belts. There's belts? Then we lubricate the chassis <laughs> if necessary. After that, we check the fluid level in the battery, adding water if needed. Visit Jiffy Lube for their thorough, some might say obsessive, Signature Service oil change. Ask for Quaker State when you come in for your next Jiffy Lube Signature Service oil change. Back here in Studio A, Steve Kerr, Charles Barkley, Kenny the Jet Smith, under nine minutes to go now in a four-point game, 66-62 Minnesota. Look into your crystal ball, Steve, down the stretch here. What do you see? If Sacramento can force some more turnovers and get some easy baskets, they've got a chance. Otherwise, they can't score in the half court. They're making shots, Sacramento. They're making shots in the second half. This ain't over, so you're gonna bring, you, we might as well get a, get a towel, get a, 
pillow and lay on the couch because we're going to be here for a while. Always good to get a towel when you're yeah. laying on the couch. Go ahead. I was actually watching The Bachelor trying to figure out who Jesse Palmer was going to pick, so I, was, I don't know. I didn't expect anything <laughs> other than that from you. I did Sacramento one. down the stretch. And as you were saying earlier, going to be some heartbreak oh, tonight. Get a blanket. Tonight. Get a blanket. It's going to be a heartbreak tonight for somebody. Let's go back to Kevin Harlan. Get Kevin. a blanket. My fault. EJ, thank you. The numbers on Kevin Garnett tonight, big numbers, and that's what you'd expect from the MVP in a big game seven. Sort of interesting. Vivian Stoyakovich, five for 21, and they're only down four. Can either one of those guys catch fire here in the last nine minutes? The Kings have only led for 64 seconds tonight. Mike Vivian getting a rest now to try to finish this game. Christie will man the point, and Stoyakovich who is having a devil of a time getting open 2 of 11. Every shot is contested. You heard Steve Kerr in the half-court game, Sacramento struggling to score. Stoyakovich has two field goals, both of them three-point shots. Knocked away by Stoyakovich on the steal against Christie. Garnett going back with Sprewell on defense. And Weber. There's the turnovers. That's the first Sacramento field goal in three minutes. It breaks a drought of 305. Well, Minnesota, when, when they get those turnovers, we you know we talked about it. When they've lost the battle of the turnovers, they've lost the games in this series. 13 for the Wolves and 12 for the Kings. Turnovers tonight. And Kevin Garnett. Why not? The Sacramento turnover. 13 for the game. Well, you can tell tired legs there. Got bumped a little bit and fell. That's a sign of fatigue. That's why that shot's not going in, contesting every shot. And his legs right now are rubbing. Garnett again. That's your old TV partner. He's got a six-point lead, and he's saying, Clock, can you just keep moving? Garnett in fourth quarter, free throw shooting has been terrific in this series. The importance of getting there, getting into penalties, so anytime you go to the basket, you shoot free throw, and you jinxed him. He's 14 of now 17 in this series for the game. Six of nine, but a game high 24 for Garnett. Under seven to play. Stoyakovich, who sneaks in the paint with an easy basket. That's the one thing that when you play Peja, if you can take away his layups, he'll struggle to score. And that's his first basket inside the three-point line of the game. That two lead changes in a tie. Timberwolves have led by 13. The Kings have led by as many as two. Weber wants a timeout, and he gets a timeout after the steal. Smart move by a guy who's played in a lot of game seven. Well, every possession is vital. You know, when you're feeding the post, Kevin, you got to get a good angle to do that. Fred Hoiberg tried to pass the ball in an angle where Weber could sneak around and knock that ball loose. Moving without the basketball, one of the best in the leagues. He gets a little bump, and Garnett just cannot quite get there soon enough. And there again, you see improving the passing lane. Weber reads it. He sneaks around, gets down on the floor, calls a 20-second timeout. And once again, when Minnesota turns the ball over, it allows Sacramento to stay close. Now down only four with a chance to cut it to two or possibly one. Well, we told you the ghosts of these deciding games, these game seven certainly haunting the Sacramento King. Well, in the first round against Utah, Vladi missed a jump hook that would have won. They lost in overtime. Lost the game five to the Lakers. Now, those were when you had the best of five. Then the game seven, we talked about the Lakers. And last year when Weber got hurt, the game seven when Van Exel had a tremendous game. And there's Jeff Petrie, the architect of this team. He can only hope that the team can find a way to ease that heartache that they felt in all those losses. Maybe he's doubled. 
Weber. Shot clock is down to five. Knocked away. That's a block shot. Johnson and Garnett were there. And Hoiberg to Sprewell. And we're halfway through the fourth quarter in game seven. Again, Cassell on the bench right now, resting. Getting ready to come in at the scores table for Garnett leading the attack. Serbian with another offensive rebound, his fourth offensive rebound tonight. Garnett. Great pass and a wonderful finish. Weber with a nice pass into Miller, and he got it to go. <laughs> Look what I found. Miller has nine points. No true point guard on the floor for the Timberwolves. Christie and Bibby comprise those two positions for Sacramento. Well, he just crossed over and left Chris Webber standing in his wake. Nobody on the weak side to help. Kevin Garnett is taking over this game. As an MVP should do. Exactly right. Good pass. Mike Bibby inside to Miller. Bibby has got a game high seven assists. You look at Kevin Garnett, though. He is so tired right now. They're only up four, still four and a half minutes. Does he have enough gas in the tank to finish off this game? I mean, Flip Saunders is going to have to use his timeouts wisely and strategically rest his star. Kevin Garnett has played 41 minutes, the little finger roll. And then the crossover, this is a guy now who's 6 feet 13, he says, he's not 7-1. Crosses over, finishes at the basket. He has the last 10 Minnesota points, and they lead by four. From the network that knows drama, Sir. defending the law has never been this dramatic. You find it. Here's where it is, right here. We beat them down. We'll see Will Smith and Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys. Saturday night at 7 on TNT. Gives me a rush. Fares to your favorite vacation destinations start at just $49. You are now free to move about the country. Hey, Captain. At ease, ladies. Sit tight and enjoy the flight. On the Soul Plane, what goes up Adios. must get down. It's your birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. Soul Plane, played it on, starts May 28th. There are no gas grills at the Great Lenexa Barbecue Battle. No gas. Why not? Well, you don't get the flavor with gas. Charcoal is the thing. Any particular charcoal? It's Kingsford. Yeah? Kingsford. For the taste. Yeah. You get a better flavor out of your meat. Kingsford. Because taste is everything. Hey, LeBron. Oh, what up, Thurs? Brother, how about a toy in your new crib? Oh, come on in. This is my bedroom? Right, right. King size water bed. Game room. Plasma screen, blah, blah, blah. And this is the kitchen. Oh, oh no, you didn't. Crisp, clean, ice cold, lemon, lime, Sprite, always at your fingertips? Check it out. <laughs> you cry? It's just so beautiful. Show him, my motto. Can a brother get a minute? This decisive seventh game on TNT tonight from Minneapolis brought to you by the Home Depot. Go from wondering how to knowing how. At the Home Depot, you can do it, and we can help. By Wagner, be a super painter with the full line of Wagner power painting tools. Paint fast and paint smart. By Wendy's new Chicken Temptations, it's better here. And by the new Sprite Remix, very clear. As we take a look at our Gatorade X Factor of the game, why not begin with the MVP, Kevin Garnett? Well, if he finishes like this, he's going to be the X, Y, and Z factor. <laughs> I mean, 28 points, 17 rebounds. Made the last 10 points for Minnesota. Taking the team on his shoulders like an MVP should, but he's going to need some help, Kevin. He's expending a lot of energy 
still over four minutes to go. The great crossover, the finish. The lob pass, the wonderful hands, the jump hook. We've seen the whole package. We've seen him on the floor with the jump shot, the drives. A lot of time left in this game. Mike Bibby, 6 of 23. Sacramento still only down four, and the only way they're in the game right now is they're plus 12 from behind that three-point line. Otherwise, they'd be down by double digits. Sacramento has a litany of deciding games over the recent years. This is Minnesota's second since 1998. So Sacramento is going to have to tap into some of that reserve, some of that past. And next, and a rebound by Mike Bibby, who takes it away from Sam Cassell. Yeah, that wasn't a good possession come out of the timeout. A fourth shot at the end of the shot clock. Brad Miller with the Irvin Johnson rebound. And a great play by Irvin Johnson to come over and chase him off that layup. Cassell and Garnett. And Miller is right there. What is interesting now is we have seen a couple of second half pushes and shoves. Remember, we have had three ejections over the last two games involving Miller, Derek Martin, and tonight the absence of Anthony Peeler being felt by the Kings. Well, cooler heads must prevail tonight. So, Serviak coming into the game for Fred Hoiberg to give him again another shooter on the floor. Miller, again, Miller picked up his third foul. But again, somebody else other than Kevin Garnett has got to be able to score here. Sam Cassell is caught once again winding down. He's going to get himself in trouble over dribbling. Shot clock is down to five. And Miller's got Garnett way outside. Oh, what a shot by Kevin Garnett! Happy birthday. Sal picks up the foul on Miller after Weber couldn't get it, and hobbling is Chris Weber. How about this with just a couple seconds left on the shot clock? Well, Sam Cassell dribbled out the whole clock, a line drive. That's one of those trolley wire threes. That's that flat shot he had when he first came into the league. But isn't that the last 13 points in a row now by Kevin Garnett? He has 31 in the game, the last 13. Kevin Garnett has only hit two three-point shots in the entire playoff, but both have come against the Kings in this series. Free throw shooting once again. We talked about Sacramento shot over 80% in the regular season. Miller steps up and misses two. And the Kings are 6 of 15, and Miller is 1 of 4. Cassell. Free throws, pressure, fatigue. Miller just picked up his fourth foul for Coach Rick Adelman. Six of 15, 80% free throw shooting team, six of 15. Remember Weber missed a two at the end of the half? I said it was a downer for his team going in. Miller there after Kevin Garnett throws in that three, steps up and misses two. On the road, you can't make those kind of plays and win in a game seven. Here comes Hassel in for Serbia. Defensive purposes, so he's going to go offense, defense. He's going to stay at the scores table. If he can, they get the ball back, then he'll come back in. Sal is 7 of 8. And you saw what Minnesota's record is when out shooting their opponent. Minnesota is plus 10 in made free throws tonight. Well, they're not living behind that three-point line. It was out of character for them tonight. They're getting to the line rather than launching threes. Mike Bibby is 3 of 11. A three by Christie. A Kevin Garnett rebound. He's got 19 tonight. He is putting in a defining performance in a game seven. This is where you need the crowd. You're tired. This is the, where they energize you. And Garnett looking for Hassel. Shot clock at two for Sprewell. Violation. A timeout will be taken. The Kings will have it when we come back. The Timberwolves have led by 13. They've trailed by two. And 
All the restaurants and watering holes surrounding the Target Center are full and in full throat. Their Timberwolves two and a half away from the Western Conference Finals. I just can't do this anymore. You want me to be happy, right? I just need more in my life. More flavor and smooth taste. Don't, don't do that. You're the king and you're funny. Nobody can question that. But I'm kind of into that cold filtered thing. This is kind of awkward. We're gonna get out of here. Every scene, and I'm feeling so good, I even got my own team. Dude, those new cordless routers are sick. You think that makes you popular? It doesn't. Don't even go there. That is just wrong. <laughs> and I said, hello, I don't get a memo, I don't go to a meeting, okay? Go ahead, talk like a teenager. The Comcast Connections Any Distance Package gives you unlimited local calling with tons of long distance and popular calling features. All this for less than $50 a month. And you can even keep your current number. Dude, what do you do about razor burn? Switching to Comcast is easy, so call now. There's an old business saying in Portland, if you want to soar with the eagles, you can't pick a bank full of turkeys. Pacific Continental, the right bank. Based on Stephen King's best-selling novel. I can hear my heart. Donald Sutherland, Salem's Lot, beginning Sunday, June 20th at 8 on TNT. When you look at the dire straits the Kings are in right now, your mind drifts back to game two earlier in the series when the Kings were up one game to none. Yeah, if they go on and lose this game seven, this is what turned it around. They had Minnesota down. They were up 10 points, and they got hit with a 16-1 to run to finish that game tied the series at 1-1, and then Minnesota went and won game three in overtime to swing it back into their favor. Will that four-plus minutes be their death knell in this series? Let's go to Cheryl Miller. Kevin and Doug, two and a half minutes away from Minnesota advancing to the Western Conference Final out of that last timeout. Flip Saunders emphasized that we have to stop the three-point shooters, get stops, stay aggressive. Wally Zerbeck said, if you have the open shot, guys, Bibby for two. Barnett wrestles down his 20th rebound. Miller rips it away in a jump ball. Now this is, excuse me, Kevin. This is an important call because Kevin Garnett should get this tap. So he's got to look around now, get two guys together, and tip the ball. But the ball is knocked loose here, and he stays with it. He doesn't quit on the play. The jump ball is called. Garnett should get this, which gives him a possession. Mike Bibby now 3 of 12 from the floor. Sacramento cut the lead to two, 66-64 with eight minutes left in the game. And Minnesota has gone on a 13-6 run, stretching that lead to nine. Kevin Garnett and Sam Cassell have scored all of Minnesota's second-half points, 17 of them. Garnett, 13 of the 17. Shot clock is at four for Sprewell. Rebound by Weber. Lead pass and fast break points to Christian. See, Cassell got buried on the baseline. He's got to get back. That shot goes up. He's buried in the corner. Better take a timeout here. I think they've called an offensive foul on Sam Cassell, pushing off on Christie. Cassell has got to step away. He's had two technical fouls in the last three games. He cannot lose his cool now. The shot is taken. Sam doesn't get back, and then he pushes off on Christie. 
how quickly these games change. The games are, I mean, Kevin, you got to play out every possession. We've seen the Lakers win a game at four tenths of a second on Fisher's shot. This game is on over. Let clock winds down to triple zero. Brad Miller, Mike Bibby for three, and the Kings to within four with 140 to play in regulation. Sam Cassell's got to be very careful there. He's very stiff, and it's, he's having a struggle with Doug Christie. He's got to stop fighting him off the dribble. Hansel is in for Serbia. Barnett. Shot clock at four. And a turnover, number 17 for Minnesota. You see, if you're flip, you'd like to have Zerbiak on the floor for offense and Hassel for defense. That time he got caught with Hassel on the floor. Weber. And Miller. And knocked away with another jump ball. Irvin Johnson with the defense. See, just subtle little things. It looked like Brad Miller had a layup, and Irvin Johnson got beat off the dribble. He didn't stop playing. Garnett came over to help him, and then he came over to help Garnett. That's good team defense. And once again, a jump ball is important. You don't see that many jump balls in a game. Flip Saunders with the reaction, but Urban Johnson should control this tip, which is very important right now. Gets him 24 seconds on the clock. Oh, Brad Miller quick jumped him and stole that tip. It's Bibby in the lane and scooping it to Weber. And missing from point blank range. Oh, what a miss. That is a killer. Christie's got the ball on a steal. And a foul on Sam Cassell. I'm telling you, Sam is a big game player, but he's trying to do too much. With his back, he does not have the mobility. He's playing against the guy who's all league defense. And you see Christie there with the long arms. He gets a turnover, and they call Sam, they call Sam jumping on the pile. Now, it's very important because he's going to be shooting free throws here. That was the foul oh, excuse to me, give. Foul to give, but, but still, they got time for two possessions. So that's a big turnover by Sam Cassell. The winner advances to the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers. And it is very much up in the air in this very... The Minnesota Timberwolves come back in Game 2 of this series. In Game 3, it was Sacramento at home coming back on Minnesota and forcing overtime. Yes, yeah, Soyakovich and Bibby had been cold the entire game. They got hot, and it was that big shot by Garnett that won in overtime. And you can see what Peja has done in Game 7s. In L.A., he was 3 for 12. Remember, he shot the air ball from the corner late in the game against Dallas. Tonight, 3 of 12. But he and Bibby are known for making big shots. Still plenty of time if you're Sacramento. You don't need a three-point shot. And Kevin Garnett has taken the steal. And he stepped out of bounds because he was shoved, moving into the defense of Stojakovic, who picks up his fourth foul. If, if Minnesota goes on to win this game, it's because this guy would not let his team lose. I mean, the big shots that he's come up with, the shot blocks, he had 13 straight points in the fourth quarter. The big steal there, we saw the challenge at the basket. If they go on to win, this is how you earn that MVP honor right here. This just validates the kind of season he has. Look at all the minutes and the points and the rebounds. He now has another steal out of that total. And Garnett, who has been a almost can't miss fourth quarter free throw shooter in this series, has missed two fourth quarter free throws tonight. That's fatigue. I mean, the guy has played tonight 45 minutes. Garnett again. He's got a 14 point fourth quarter. Does Kevin Garnett. Mike Bibby and fouled on the perimeter. Well, that's the last thing you wanted if you're Minnesota, because now there's a 2.9 differential. So if Bibby makes both of these free throws, they stop Minnesota, a three-pointer then would tie the game. So that's the, the last thing you want to have is foul that with the shot clock now. 
still that Minnesota has to shoot the basketball. Maybe in this series against the Timberwolves, shooting 92% from the free throw line. But the Kings tonight, only 6 of 15 from the strike. Well, it goes back to remember that fateful game against the Lakers. They missed 14 free throws in that game. Now, now the question's going to be, does Rick Adelman feel like the 2.9 is enough time to play the clock out, or is he going to take the foul? He has to make a decision as a coach. If we stop them, do we have enough time to score? Bibby is 4 of 6 from the free throw line. Three point fouls to give with Doug Collins, Kevin Harlan. Timberwolves will be inbounding the ball. Well, first of all, flips on is you got to get your most reliable guy to throw the ball in, in bounds. You've got a full timeout in the 20, so there should be no panic. Take your time if you can't get in and take another timeout. Question's going to be, is Rick Edelman going to foul, or is he going to try to play out? There's a 2.9 differential. Can you get a rebound, take a timeout, and then be able to get your three-point shot, or are you going to foul and extend the game? Weber is out there with Christy, Miller, Stiakovic, and Bibby. That is a Sacramento five on defense. Now, Hoiberg has got a bigger man throwing him, going, uh, on him trying to throw the ball, and you can't move. You cannot move or it's walking. You can, it's walking out of bounds, so you've got to keep your position there, and you can throw the ball in the backcourt. Which they did, and that's retrieved by Sprewell. And quickly fouled. And Christy picks it up. He's got four. Now, this is going to be interesting because Sprewell has missed some critical free throws late in games. Tonight he is 0 of 1. Just watch the guy's mannerisms at the line. Always watch if they're nervous, if they're antsy, if they're moving around. Do they stay in their routine? Do you start tugging at the jersey? All signs, it's you know, calm yourself down. You, gotta, you need one of these to push it to a two-possession game. 17 of 23 from the line in the series. The reminder the playoffs continue Friday night on TNT. It's game one, Western Conference Finals between the Lakers and the winner of this game between the Timberwolves and the Kings. Remember, the Lakers used to be the Minneapolis Lakers. L.A. stole their team, so nothing much that they would love to do is to play them. It's a miss, and it's a four-point game. Bibby. Christie for three, and it's a one-point game with under 17 seconds to play in a Minnesota timeout. Doug Christie with a king's high 21 points, and Christie just nailed his third three-point shot in four attempts tonight. See, with the missed free throw, Bibby could attack right in the open court, and Hoiberg gets sucked in on that play. you got to stay at home with a three-point shooter. A two doesn't hurt you there. A three does. And now it's going to get very interesting. Minnesota's going to have to handle the ball and make free throws. Hoiberg, here he is right here. And Bibby's going to penetrate. He's playing against Doug Christie. And you've got to stay home in this situation on the three-point shooter. Watch what happens. On penetrate, he gives help. Look, he gets dragged into the lane. Now nobody guarding Christie, wide open. If you give up that two, that doesn't hurt you nearly as bad. That three now changes this whole game. Timberwolves led by nine with 3-10 left. The Kings have gone on a 10-2 run, cutting the lead to one. Sacramento has led for only 64 seconds. It came late in the third quarter. Who's going to come get the ball in their hands to shoot the free throws? It's Cassell, who tonight is 8 of 9 from the free throw line with 21. Five fouls on Doug Christie. The series, Sam Cassell is 67% from the line. In the playoffs overall, 81%. So he has not shot well against the Kings in this series. Sacramento's got a timeout, a full. The Timberwolves have a 20. See, Sacramento will be very interesting. Do they take their last timeout? Or do they just push the ball ahead and try to get a quick score and save their timeout for another possession? We'll see if Rick Adelman uses his last timeout here. Casal in the fourth quarter from the free throw line, five of five. 
It is a timeout for the Sacramento Kings with 16.2 to play. In this game seven, in this win or go home to either end or extend their season. Doug Collins and Cheryl Miller, Kevin Holland, 16.2 to play. Minnesota by three. The winner goes to the Western Conference Finals. Options for the Kings who will inbound the ball. Well, they're out of timeouts, but this with 16 seconds, you can still get a quick two, foul, and extend the game. There's enough time to do that, so they don't necessarily need a three, but they love to run a play with Vivian Stojakovic, a dribble handoff. Stojakovic coming off the double hand, dribble handoff, and they kick it back to him to shoot the three. If that's the play, they're going to run. Christian to Tom. Caught by Miller. Rejected by Garnett. See, Miller's got to kick that ball out. That's where you get a three on an offensive rebound. Do you foul? Do you foul and prevent them from shooting the three? Out of bounds, Sacramento's ball, 1.9. Kevin, a big, I mean, does, does Flip Saunders, when the ball is thrown in, take the foul so they can't get the three off? Remember, Sacramento, no timeouts. We'll check the time on the clock. They've got 2-2 two, two on there now, so they've got three-tenths of a second. Weber. Minnesota Timberwolves are going to the Western Conference Finals. on my birthday you know seven years have been knocked out and now we're going to the western conference finals and i feel pretty good spring you guys have been in the you at personally have been in game sevens of this magnitude how much did this team grow tonight i mean our defense did it for us no doubt about it we didn't we didn't handle those situations as far as turning the ball over but you know on the other end we just you know stayed together said get stops you know taking care of it was his birthday i mean he stepped it up that's why he's the mvp you know, at one time, Doug Collins didn't think that you had any energy left. You knocked down a three-pointer. You come up with a big steal. Where'd it come from? Yeah. This is what you play all, all regular season for. Yeah. You know, my mom always tell me, sometimes heart just carries you through. And uh, we're in no position to be tired. You know, I told Flip, we told Flip, hey, we, we was prepared to play 48 if we had to. 
now we're now now it's time to focus on the Lakers and the Western you know, Conference Finals. You know, one thing that he said, the kid here said before training camp, he just felt that this team was going to be special. Have you guys reached that point where you feel that this was a defining game for you guys? I think definitely. This was a hard fought game. Sacramento, I mean, they are an excellent team, and they, you know, they move and cut, and they have excellent shooters. I mean, what can you say? We we stuck together though. Like I said, our defense did it and took it care of us tonight. Sam got us off to a good start as well. So. I mean, with the, with the injury that he has, you know, he toughed that out. So that's what it's all about. All right, let me look at my watch. Big ticket. You don't have a lot of time to celebrate this oh, win. That's your best. Absolutely. But talk about the matchup against the Lakers. Very tough matchup. We know we got our hands full. Uh, we come in tomorrow, start prepared for that. But right now, we're going to just enjoy this. Everybody's going to try to get off their feet quick as possible and get ready for the Lakers tomorrow. All right, congratulations, birthday boy. I appreciate that. All right, Let's send it back over to you, Kevin. All right, Cheryl. A chance for the tie from Chris Webber. Now, Chris Webber pump fakes. Look at this ball rattle in and out. The red light is on. And the agony once again for Sacramento. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Los Angeles Lakers, after beating San Antonio, will make their way to Minneapolis tomorrow and harness themselves in for game one. Friday night, you can see that exclusively on TNT. Doug, before we conclude and wind up with what the Timberwolves have accomplished, let's go back to the Sacramento Kings, another haunting Game seven, deciding game loss. Well, I, I think when you trace the roots of this series loss, it goes back to game two. When they when they had a 10-point lead a little over four minutes ago, Minnesota's spirits at that point in time had been crushed. You watched them walking back to the bench. It looked like they were going to lose both games on their home floor and go down 0-2. 16-1 to that one run. They steal that game. And that turned the series back around. And then Kevin Garnett, this is this is a defining moment for a player, a young player, 28 years old, nine years in the league, has had his heart broken seven times in the playoffs. He and his coach hung with it, Kevin McHale. They changed the team. They brought in Cassell and Sprewell and some other pieces. What a great moment here in Minneapolis. Now your reward is you get one day and you get the Lakers back to back on Friday, Sunday. What what a tough stretch ahead, but a wonderful night in Minneapolis. And I'm, you know, I'm I'm sad for Sacramento, but I've been such a huge fan of Kevin Garnett's my entire. I just think he plays the game with a passion and joy that every young player should be able to, to watch and, and really get a lot from. Terrific game seven. It was a great game seven and great being your partner this year and all the people who worked. It was a lot of fun. So the Timberwolves win it 83 to 80. And the MVP puts in 32, 14 in the fourth quarter. They say that the playoffs and game sevens in particular define a player's career. It is much more defined for Kevin Garnett. For Cheryl Miller and Doug Collins, our statistician Pat McGrath, Scott Cockrell, our producer, Lonnie Dale, our director, Kevin Harlan saying so long as we send you to Ernie Johnson in our studios.